Hello, this is Linda Vetris Nichols, evolutionaryhealer.com, and I have with me Sandy McDougall. Welcome, Sandy. Hi, Linda. Great to be here with you today. Awesome. So happy to have you on. Sandy talks about Maverick Edge, and like, what does that even mean, Sandy? I know you have a great story about transitions in your life and really how you lost your magic maverick edge but let's start out with like a definition of maverick edge what does that mean to you yes the maverick edge so we have uh, many uh uses of maverick in our culture especially in the media like sports teams and movie stars and so on but my definition of maverick is different quite unique she who follows her heart no matter what you have to break the mold okay. so it might sound like a gentle thing to do she who follows her heart but really it's a very powerful thing to do and it's so powerful i believe that it gives you your edge it brings us each of us when we follow our heart when we follow that maverick energy the one willing to break the mold to be true to yourself to be authentic and aligned within right that uh, everything in you comes forward to its peak place. And, and instead of being scattered widely or distracted, actually goes all in one focused direction. And it's your, your most powerful, highest, most brilliant place to be contributing and to be living. That's the Wonder. magic edge. I love it. I love it. So let's pull down your slides. At uh, while I'm doing that, will you tell our listeners, our viewers, about your life? Because you had, you're a very active woman, um, and then you really went into some dark days, and uh, you have the coolest story about, uh, you know, your toe. <laughs> Would you share a little bit about that whole experience you had in, in shifting in, back into your Maverick Edge? Yes, and my story is just my story, but many of us have similar stories. So I'll introduce my story by saying, you know, when you hear mine, think, do you have one or two or 10 like that? So my story takes place three and a half years ago or so, not that long, considering how long you and I have lived, Linda. Right. And uh, yes, and <laughs> I had, I'd had a problem with my foot. I had gone to see different specialists. Finally, at the end of a long line of seeing different people and much time going by, right. I had, yes, I had uh, received sort of the conclusionary advice. The thing that will take care of your problem is to go get some surgery on your toe. Well, that was told to me by, um, you know, a well-respected specialist. And there I was one day, I found myself sitting outside the operating room all decked out in my gear, the gowns and the whole business, getting ready to go in. Well, I thought that was maybe going to be the end of my problem, but instead, as I sat there, I realized I got a knowing that was more sure, more clear, deeper knowing than almost any other knowing I've had in my life, a truth, a deep truth. Wow. This surgery is not going to solve my problem. This is not the best way to go forward. Well, I went ahead. I didn't even tell my husband, who was sitting beside me, how that truth had come to me. I didn't even talk about it, tell him about it, ask him about it. Instead, I went on in and had the surgery. So the second part of the story is there I am in the few weeks after the surgery, recuperating in bed, staring at the ceiling, not going to work, lots of time to think things over. Right. And I back to that moment where I knew I should not have the surgery and after the surgery it became even more clear that I shouldn't have had the surgery that I should have chosen an alternative route. Wow. One day I asked myself did I go forward? Why didn't I listen when I heard that such a strong message? And I realized there were three reasons. One, I wasn't very good at speaking back to authority and saying I think I know my truth and I might know it better than you, authority being the doctor. I, Two, I didn't want to embarrass myself. What would my friends say if I went home? Doctors told me I need surgery and I asked for my clothes and walk out. I might be the laughing stock. Could I bear that? 
at that point, no, I couldn't. Aww. And three, I didn't want to inconvenience anybody. So those nice people in the operating room have gotten the room so ready for me. Who was I not to oblige them? Well, it all sounds very ridiculous to me now, but in the state of mind I was in then, those main voices kept me sitting there and going through a surgery I didn't need. So I asked myself, was this a one-time situation or might this be a pattern in my life where I will not speak up to authority and trust my own voice, where I don't want to do anything unexpected for fear of, quote, embarrassing myself and what people would say, and nor right. would I ever want to influence somebody by changing my mind or doing something unexpected. And that's when the light bulb went off and I said, no more. I've done that all my life as a pattern. And now, from now on, I'm going to follow my own heart, trust my own truth, and follow my maverick edge, if you will. It wasn't, I didn't come to maverick right then, but it was the beginning, it was a turning point where I said, I just need to, I'm old enough, wise enough, experienced enough, it's time for me to own what I know and what, who I want to be, what I want to do, no matter what anybody else says. So that's the story of my toe, but for me, it was a turning point. And many of us can look at patterns in our life the same way and see when it's a situation to do with health or relationships or people at work or family or uh, con conflicting or confusing situations, do we trust the truth that we really know inside? And do we stand up to it for it? So yes, right. that's, my, that's the story I often tell, Linda. Thanks for asking. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in, in part of telling it today, you were using the word, the word should, I should have done this, I should have done that as you looked back. And I should on myself as well, I lost, uh, not lost, but in, in um, labor with my firstborn, um, my heart accidentally stopped. I didn't know any of that until weeks later when I told uh, this story to uh, the uh, husband. And uh, what had happened is I thought I was up in the mirror. I mean, I thought I was looking in the mirror and I was actually in the mirror looking down. And I kind of went, maybe I should go back. I think that be, maybe I should go back. I think that he needs me. And so I should on myself you know, at the point of death, I was like, whoa, that was quite an awakening. So as we all like are working on our mindsets and looking at our patterns, um, we really can work in degrees and, and even shift just one little word in our lives can make such a difference for us. Do you agree? Absolutely. And I'm very, very, um, I guess, What's the word? I'm, I'm very attached to this notion, and you can see it in the slide here, of moving and shifting by degrees. There are many of us who feel like we have to turn our life upside down when we have those moments of enlightenment like you had or like I had. Mm -hmm. And that can lead to a lot, of, uh, a lot more dislocation and uh, maybe decisions or actions that we wish we hadn't taken because things go so quickly when if we have a crisis moment and then we want to solve the problem immediately. Oh, I should never again, you know, listen to authority or embarrass myself. And I'll do everything, you know, differently. Well, instead, I feel like it's really important once we have that clarity that we want to stay in alignment with ourselves. That's a big job. And getting more acquainted with the different dimensions of ourselves. So, yes, learning by degrees, testing the waters. Well, maybe I'll do it with my dog first or with my child or with one situation and see how does that resonate with me after? Do I feel that I spoke my truth? Do I feel that I took the action that's really in alignment with me? Yes, okay, I learned something. Now let me do it somewhere else. And we bring all of us along because we live in many dimensions. We are, we are in relationships and we are in work situations and we have our well-being and our spiritual life, all these different things. And so yes, taking it by degrees, but starting with that clarity, first asking ourselves, who are we? Where are we? You know, how are we going to um, deal with every little situation and big that comes along? And I say, do it by degrees. Learn about, I love it. you know. Yeah, I love it. And I love the way you have sort of that light bulb look. Is, you know, um, 
<laughs> guy who invented the light bulb didn't do it in a day, yeah. right? <laughs> he just kept at it. So I really believe there are no mistakes in life, valuable learning experiences, but it's not about making mistakes. And it really is about noticing. You can set an intention, you know, make a decision, make a choice, and then notice when you're not following through on that choice. And I really believe it's as simple as that. So let's go to your teaching. So great. Yeah, so start where you are, and it's never too late, and you're not alone, and life is a dance. Want to summarize that up for us? Um, I, I like to start where you are, you know. Uh, that's an important, it sounds like common sense, it sounds very simple, but often we wish we were very much farther ahead or somewhere else very different than where we are. That first noticing that you're talking about, I like that word. Notice that you are where you are. And just taking stock of that and realizing what, what, are, what do I really know about myself? What do, where do I know that I'm compromising or, or not facing the truth? Okay, now you've taken stock of that. From there, you start taking your steps. So, so being honest and clear where you are is key. That's key. I love and it. it's, also, it's also hopeful. Right. Some of us find ourselves either in dark places or stuck places and we feel like it's all over. It's too late. We'll never do any, you know, we, we can never dig ourselves out of right. whatever situation. I say not true. Start where you are and it is never too late. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is not a, this is not a race. Right. And miracles can happen in a moment if you let, if you let them. I mean, people have, some people have turned their whole relationship to their life around on their deathbed. Right. Well, hopefully yeah. we don't have to wait as long. Yeah, so let's not it's wait that long. <laughs> right, Linda? Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> I love it. And then you've, you know, you're doing a great job of uh, building support around this and, you know, gathering groups of women together and you take your Maverick Edge road trips and, and you know, you do, you just, you dance through life. You and I are both dancers, um, and we both love to dance through life. I'm going to move it to the next slides real quick. Okay, so Thanks. follow what you love. Listen to your soul. Find your joy. Know your truth. How about all that? So follow what you love, I think, underscores uh, the, the wisdom of looking at your life as a journey. Not a destination, but you're just following a path. And the farther you go, when you, uh, you know, are on the right path, every moment, every day brings joy, success, fulfillment. When you're following what you love, and how do you know what you love? And right. we don't want to, common sense, we don't want to follow what we don't love. But how many times do we really do that? So how do we start? We listen in. That's the noticing that you were talking about. Listening in. That's the voice I didn't listen to. Or I listened, but I didn't do anything about it in the hospital. Yep. And you know what you love when you feel joy around it. What do I love? We ask ourselves. I don't know what I love. I've heard clients say to me, I don't know what I love. So we start by looking for where this joy is sourced in our life. And then when we find those things, to actually know our truth and trust it is a big deal. I knew my truth in the operating outside the operating room, but I didn't trust it. Now that was a big example, but we are faced with little examples every day. Mm -hmm. So trusting, knowing that truth and standing in that place in alignment makes, and, and you know, coming back to the purpose of your whole series that you're in now, Linda, we are talking about finding good guidance in life, finding good guidance in business too. So I want to just underscore that these are applications you can make every day in your business as well. Perfect. Let's go to the next slide. So trust the power of synergy, develop clarity, take courage, and be creative. Yeah, sounds like fun, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I love clarity. Mavericks have more fun. So we were talking, I was talking, and you were too, about taking, making progress or making decisions by degrees, taking small steps so that you learn. You, you will make mistakes, and then you will learn. You might fail sometime, and then I learn. But we need to take some risks to put ourselves out there, get see what the reaction is inside and externally, and learn. Oh, that's right. me. That's, oh, that's yeah. not me. And by yeah. doing it in small, 
you think we won't go anywhere, but I say there's synergy there. If you put a little energy here and a little energy here, a little energy there, you turn around and look back and you see that you've actually come a way far, longer way. You've expanded your life or fulfilled your life or found more success or become more happy or healthy, whatever it is, greatly, much more than, than, it will, will, than you can predict by taking, if you just looked in a rational way of taking small steps. So just take your steps, you will travel. So first, we'll do the clarity piece, which is that noticing and understanding. I'm here today, and I don't want to be here. So the first clarity is I want to be more, say, in alignment or more in, in my truth. The second is the courage. I might know something, but if I don't take action, I need courage to take action. That's what's actually going to create change, shift, success, fulfillment, whatever it is in my life. Right. And then... As we do that, you, Linda, me, and the next person, we each have diff we're in different lives, and we need to be creative, as creative as possible, and want to be. That's the fun part. That's the part where we make our way through obstacles or up the hills or into the the, the spaces where we can, you know, enter worlds like writing a book or doing uh, radio interviews or coaching or building a business. Things we might not have done before, or right. we want to grow to a new that calls on the creative part and the clarity and the courage to do that will bring the creativity in. I love it. And there is the power of synergy right there. So you get to trust in it. <laughs> All right. So to review, start where you are, follow what you love, trust the power of synergy. Anything else you wanted to add to those three, Sandy? I think those three are very, very powerful and energizing and motivating. And so many of us get feel that it's either all over or we're not good enough or we won't figure it out. They can figure it out, but we haven't figured it out. I'm all about letting any one person who chooses to commit to growth or expansion, mm -hmm. or uh, greater success, or just a whole lot more fulfillment and fun in life, it can happen through these very simple steps. Often it helps to have coaching or assistance or support, like the other one before. Don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. We're not built as human beings to take our journey alone, so don't do that. We all have coaches. You've got coach, I've got coaches, we've got coaches, and so let's all sort of reach out our hand towards the next person and say, I, I see this little part, come and get this little part, and then you can go on farther. So that's partly the synergy too, what we do as a community and how we share ideas and create this web of mutual aid. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we come into this world all in our power. And then all this stuff happens and we start to forget. And so when we get together, then everyone else is helping us to remember something that we're not. And that's the beauty of the synergy of the relationships. And that's why I love teaching relationship marketing. That, that's so well put. And one way I might add that sort of a different angle is, and this is Maverick Energy, is give yourself new experiences. Mm. Wow, great. Like you say, we for, we come into this world completely whole, and then mm -hmm. we forget. So we do. Rubbing into new experiences, whether it's different people, uh, pushing envelopes somewhere, trying something new, breaking mm -hmm. a mold, we learn about ourselves that way, and that's how we... Yes, and it is a bit of a paradigm shift to really stop and think about you, and when we do that, we become a better wife, a better mother, uh, a better sister, a better friend a better business um, person. I love it. Thank you so much, Sandy. And you have a wonderful, very generous gift. You're, you're giving the Maverick Playbook to our viewers. Can you tell us a little bit about the Maverick Playbook? I am all about, well, speaking of new experiences, that's a good segue. Um, this playbook is something you can download and you see the site to go to there, www.themaverickedge.com. And yep, it's in their email. It. It's in their email. So, yes, they're all set. So all you have to do is click. But you can download this thing, sit down with it, a cup of tea on your sofa in a quiet room, 
And it's the purpose is to juice up your imagination for what is possible in your life, for what you love and value. And those things talk about clarity, courage, and creativity. It, it's meant to give you a lot more clarity about what you love and value, then motivate that courage to go explore, to go check it out. Is this true? Do I really, is this what I really want to do? And motivates that creativity. So that's what I love the Maverick Playbook for, and I welcome you to try it. Very cool. All right, yeah, so that's right in the email for you. And take the slides out. There we go. And we're back. All right. Thank you so much. That was awesome. I love it when you get into that. In when you personally get into your Maverick Edge energy, uh, when I interview you. <laughs> so thank you for that. Any other final words you'd like to leave our listener viewer people with? <laughs> um. Yes, I, I hadn't uh, planned on something, but I'll just say it this way. So I'm, we talked about community and connection. And uh, one last word I have is the Maverick, one of the reasons I'm motivated around the work that I do in the Maverick Edge, and I see this with Linda as well, is there's so much in ways that we can uplift our own lives and our own businesses through these teachings and sharing. But there's a larger purpose too, which is, to raise up and uplift our communities, mm. our culture, and our, our whole world. And I find that motivating as well, and a lot of people do. So if you feel that in your corner, you might not be able to have a big effect, think again, because when each of us takes the steps we need to uplift our lives, find more success, whether it be financial or influential or being a thought leader or just sit a little taller in your chair at home while you work on something, it adds up and there's synergy there. So synergy is not just in the personal business level, but it grows around the globe. So do a reach to our piece and magic will happen. I love it. Yeah, and it's very much a part of inner peace, which I'm very passionate about. And inner peace leads to world peace. And that's a beautiful thing. And you can all feel it now in the energy of the new world. It's just, a lot has changed. So thank you so much for listening and viewing the interview and uh sandy thank you so much yeah i'm gonna buzz off okay thank you sandy bye-bye